Hi, my name is Pat, and I am a grateful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I would like to do a reading and a commentary of day four from the book, 90 Days Encouragement for the Christian Overeater. Day four is found on page 16. The name of the reading is called Blind Guide. The verse is from Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Matthew chapter 15, verses 14. Blind guide. Even before I could help myself, I had this deep desire to be of help to others. I was especially sensitive to those who were struggling with weight and or overeating issues. I subconsciously believed that if I could motivate others to do what was right, then I could motivate myself. I did not see this as putting the cart before the horse. Jesus says, why do you look at the speck of dust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your own eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. This is Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. I had a plank in my own eye, and it was called pride. I liked telling others how to get their life in order because it could let me forget about the chaos and disorder in my own life. However, without the wisdom of God, I was adding to the misery of others. I was a blind guide. As a maturing Christian, I am beginning to see that it's never about me helping in my own power. It is about being a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone has the wisdom of knowing what is needed. He alone provides the power to walk alongside another and not merely point the way. Let us pray. Thank you for the indwelling spirit who teaches me and empowers me. Thank you, Father, for the many times you have allowed me to lovingly guide another. I pray to give you the glory and praise whenever another is helped by my obedience. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have the book, you can see um, these questions that follow the reading and dig deeper. They are, um, first, it is directed that you read Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 through 28. Underline verses and phrases that speak to your heart. Paraphrase one or more of these. Pray to apply today what God's Word is saying to you. Write about the people who sadden you as you see them struggling with food and weight issues. How is your present recovery helping them? Who are the people that you always seem to be giving advice? Do you share with them in the first person or do you point out the gap without offering to be a yoke fellow? Do you need to make amends for your behavior in this regard? Are you concerned about a child or younger sibling who seems to be following in your overeating footsteps? Write out a prayer to God about your concerns. And now the commentary. Um, in the verse, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verses 14. They are blind guides. If a blind man leaves a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Blind guides. In my flesh I have nothing to give. I must throw myself upon the Lord 
asking him to fill me up. Without the Lord, I can do nothing of lasting value. With the Lord, I'm able to do kingdom work that will last for eternity. And this is where the overeating comes into play. In the reading, um, there was a good focus on Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 through 5, about having a plank in our own eyes. And as an overeater, when I was actively, compulsively overeating, my overeating was a huge plank in my eye. And as long as I was continuing to overeat, um, I could not see clearly how to help my brother in his distress, especially with the overeating. My true motivation has to come by sharing how the Lord is working in my own life to move the mountains that at times seems overwhelming. I am so grateful for how the Lord has um, rescued me from my overeating. I give him thanks. I give him praise that for going on 23 years, it will be 23 years in August, um, that I have been abstinent, and it has truly been the grace of God. And I give him the praise and glory for that. And by allowing him to minister to me, by allowing him to show me how to eat in a God-honoring way, it gave me lessons that I could pass on to another person. If you are still struggling with compulsive overeating and you're listening to my voice, or perhaps you are abstinent but you are working with people who are struggling, then I would really um, say, first, make sure that they are believers in the Lord Jesus. If they do not know the Lord, um, then that is step one. Um, He alone gives us the power to stop doing those things that are hurtful to us. Um, I would say that um, if you are working with someone who is still struggling and they don't know the Lord, then pray uh, for their salvation. Pray that they will call upon the Lord and ask Him to come and take residence in their hearts. But perhaps um, you yourself, you know that you do know the Lord and you wonder about this overeating and you cannot quite understand it. Then it has a lot to do with a stronghold that indeed um, is a part of your life that you have just reserved for yourself and you're not giving it to the Lord. And I would say um, to truly again call out to the Lord and confess to him that this is a sinful thing that you're doing. As long as you do not see your overeating as sinful, it has been my experience that you will have a hard time um, to um, get abstinent. That it really has to be seen as a sin. That is something that the Lord does not want you to do. And um, I also found from my experience that those who suffer from compulsive overeating really need to be very, very clear about their food. Uh, Many who have long-term abstinence have found the importance of having a food plan and also having a sponsor. Anyway, let me pray for this last part. Dear Lord, um, I thank you so much again for abstinence and I want to pray for anyone who is listening, who is struggling. Please, Lord, give them the willingness and the strength to call out to you to take the suggestions that were given. And it's in the name of the Lord Jesus that I pray. Amen.